My name is Amanda Melvina Fisk. Let me tell you the story of my life. I was born on June 12, 1832, in Silver Creek, Chautauqua County, New York. Silver Creek has rolling green hills and is located on the shores of Lake Erie, just southwest of Buffalo. My twin brother John Henry Fisk died at a very young age. My parents are Alfred Fisk and Mariah Sagers. My grandparents are Hezekiah Fisk, Rhoda Walker, John Sagers, and Amy Sweet. My family has deep roots in Rhode Island. My parents and grandparents were early convert to what is now the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We moved to Kirtland, Ohio at two years old. When I was two years old, I received a priesthood blessing by the hand of Joseph Smith. I would cherish this blessing the rest of my life. My dad Alfred joined the prophet on the trek to Missouri during Zion's camp. He readily volunteered in what was to become a rigorous refiner's fire. My grandpa Hezekiah Fisk and Uncle William and Uncle Sterry were also members of Zion's camp. Further into Missouri, cholera struck. My father died of that sickness in Liberty Clay County, Missouri at the age of 28. Joseph Smith said of those men who died of the cholera in our camp, and the Lord knows, if I get a mansion as bright as theirs, I ask no more. My mother Mariah was left alone at eight months pregnant. Baby Emma arrived, but soon died. We moved to Missouri to the banks of the Missouri River. Mother became ill and died at the same location as father. She was buried next to dad. I became an orphan at three. My parents both died, but I still had my four grandparents. I probably moved in with Hezekiah and Rhonda Fisk, who traveled to Missouri in the same company. We went through persecution of far west. Missouri's Governor Lilburn Boggs ordered the saints expelled from the state or exterminated if necessary. Over the next year, around 8,000 church members, often ragged and deprived of their property, left Missouri for Illinois. We were driven out of Missouri in 1839. We arrived in Nauvoo, Illinois. My grandparents Hezekiah and Rhonda died three days apart shortly arriving to Nauvoo. They suffered from exposure. Also three of my Fisk uncles died all in that same year. I was probably raised by my Sager's grandparents at this point or maybe Aunt Minerva Sager's Howard. We saw the rise of the beautiful Nauvoo city, were saddened by the martyrdom of Joseph Smith, and were gladdened by the Nauvoo Temple dedication. I am listed by my middle name Melvina in this 1847 Nauvoo Third Ward listing. I had light golden hair, blue eyes and was about 5 feet 8 inches tall. I moved to winter quarters. I was hired as a nanny in early April 1848 to a single man named Alan Joseph Stout. His wife Elizabeth Anderson Stout recently died after the birth to their baby Martha. They had two other boys, Charles and Alan, both under five. Martha was three months old when I started work. I was only 16 years old. Alan and I agreed to get married, so on the 30th of April, Brigham Young came over and we were married at Alan's house. Alan was 32 and I was 16 years old. We soon moved to Pigeon Creek, Iowa and planted a garden. We wanted to get to the valleys of the mountains. By July 1851 we were ready to leave. We had two more children Lydia and Alfred. Alan bought a wagon and got three yoke of oxen from the Perpetual Emigration Fund. We joined the James W. Cummings Company. During the journey, we lost one ox on the plains and the wolves killed another. We saw thousands of buffalo at a time, just as far as the eye could see. At Independence Rock, Wyoming I became very ill with inflammatory rheumatism, and was not able to get out of the wagon until Salt Lake. When we arrived, Uncle Hosea Stout brought out a big chair. I was lifted out of the wagon and carried in the house. We bounced around various places in Utah the next 10 years, from Salt Lake to Centerville, to Mill Creek, to Pleasant Grove. I had five children during this time, Hosea, David, Rebecca, Alan, and Amanda. The name of our son David was announced at his birth by an unseen being. We moved to Pleasant Grove to avoid Johnston's army who we thought would annihilate the saints. All my children we gave the middle name of Fisk. I was advised by Brigham Young to preserve the memory of my noble parents and grandparents whose surname was blotted out by mobs and persecutions. In 1861, we were called to relocate to southwestern Utah to help establish a cotton mission. I felt bad and didn't want to live in a hot climate since I was very fleshy, about 250 pounds at the time. We first tried to settle in Harrisburg, but the soil was such for starvation. 
We moved in 1864 to Long Valley and settled just north of Glendale. We named it Lydia's Canyon after our daughter and the name stuck. In two years the family was forced to leave this home because of Indian trouble and the outbreak of the Black Hawk War. John and Orlando were born during this time. We were in a very destitute situation. Alan had his sight entirely gone from his left eye. We were forced to leave home, farm, and two years of hard labor and rushed to Dixie. In the midst of sickness and death we moved into a house belonging to Isaiah Cox. Milton was born in St. George. The hot weather did not agree with me. In 1867 we sold our property in St. George and moved to Rockville, where we spent the rest of our lives. The climate was better for us. We planted corn, vegetables and fruit trees on our small farm. I made all the clothes for the family and we ate cornmeal as our principal diet. I was happy Alan stopped smoking. Don Carlos was born, but died within five months of measles. Here is our 1870 census in Rockville. In 1874, Brigham Young came to Rockville and organized the United Order. We accepted and enthusiastically joined. We were to help the poor and to reverse a growing tendency toward worldliness. We went into that head and heels. I had three more children, Hulda, Anna, and Marion. I bore fourteen children and was a stepmother to three more. I loved being a mother in Zion. I suffered a great deal from rheumatism and dropsy. My sister-in-law Anna moved in after her husband died. We had to work extra to build another room for her. We made baskets, pruned vineyards, and sold logs. I sometimes was well enough to accompany my husband to St. George to view the new temple being constructed there. He drank coffee for many years but when we came to work in the temple we would not drink it anymore. We attended the St. George Temple dedication April 6, 1877. We continued to raise our family in Rockville. Doing research and working in the temple was a high priority, especially for my husband. We traveled back and forth to St. George. We did a lot of temple work for our ancestors. In 1885, I fell and broke my leg and never fully recovered. In September 1888, I suffered a serious stroke and which paralyzed my entire body. I became speechless and unconscious until my death. My spirit was set free on September 21, 1888 from the suffering which I had so long endured. I was 56. I was true to the faith, valiant to the call of the prophets, and mother of 14. I love my wonderful posterity. My obituary says I lived and died a faithful Latter-day Saint. I am buried at the Rockville Cemetery with my husband Alan Stout, who died just a year later. Come give me a visit. I am Amanda Melvina Fisk Stout. I passed through the trials of Kirtland, Missouri, and Nauvoo. I pioneered to Utah and helped settle southern Utah. Thank you for listening to my story.